Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters everywhere, anywhere, may Allah make your day, your life prosperous, happy, safe, and peaceful, inshallah. Today I'm going to talk about a cry from a young teen aging girl whom I listened to her discussion with her aunties and maybe mother a year ago, exactly on the 16th of December 2017, last year, at 8.43 a.m. I listened to it on the YouTube. She was crying. They are trying in a very traditional way to convince her to learn the traditional way we have been learning. And she was a revolutionary young teenager who was crying and telling them, how can I have a culture and they have no state or no country to live within to make my culture? This generation gap is extremely serious between our generation and the younger generation. Between my generation and the young Palestinian girl's generation, which is about 13, 14, another one generation in the middle, which they are in the middle of their 30s, end of 20s, and so on, so on, so on. We need to realize that the gap between us and them is a huge gap in the way we think, the way we comprehend, the way we act, the speed of our reaction, and the dimension of our vision and mission and message which they cannot comprehend. This girl, when I listened to her and that her discussion, uh, and this is her image, which I draw, okay, it's exactly a typical case of young teenage Palestinian girl who crying, I have no state, I have no country, I have no stable society. How can you mother? How can you auntie, how can you older, older cousins or neighbors ask me to learn and be exactly like you? Before I start, I have to go back to thank everyone who helped me in this, including Ahmed al Heid, Ahmed al Sheikh, Ahmed al Heid from Sudan, Ahmed al Sheikh from Idlib, Abdurrahman Nahas from Birmingham, and Maher Sayed from actually. Uh, Antakya in Turkey. I have to, uh, to, to thank all of them. Going from this image, I have this introduction made by Ahmed Sheikh, which I have to read it to you. Bear with me. This is an image of a child having no school desks at the current era of science science, technology, advancement, and development. This is an image of a deprived passion, uh, of a child deprived from having a mother, a father, or both. This is an image from a girl or young girl who is deprived from having amusement, having fun, playing with friends or even and even their toys become what? Tanks, bullet, and rockets, bombs. It's an image of a deprived girl. Deprived girl from what? From smiles, smiling, from babyhood, deprived from babyhood, infancyhood, childhood, innocence, and childlike. Why we make them guilty? This is, a, this is a question to all of us. Why you make them guilty of creating a war they are not responsible for? And again, it's a disastrous outcome, which made them displaced, refugees, homeless, stateless, losing their culture, moral values, and good manner. It's us, the older generation. It's an image of a lost Palestinian girl walking above a sharp, steeply, and rough rocks, walking between ruins of her demolished house, searching for her memories, and the memories of her friends, her toys, school bag, 
coloring pins. She is not like other children living in this planet. This is the young teenager. It's an image of a future mother who do not know defeat, do not know surrender, and her soul will fly above her agony, above her bleeding painful wounds to send a global universal message drawn and painted by the colors of freedom and the pride of belief. It's an image showing the pain of displacement, family separation, and detachment from homeland, from homeland. No one will be able to see the reality of this apart from those who so lived through and walked their journey of life with it. This is the message of the introduction of how this young teenage girl is fighting an endless fight with the elder generation to let them to understand that she cannot have culture if she does not have a state, she does not have a country, she does not have a society to live on, stable society. Today we are talking about our country, our homeland. What homeland for us means? This is actually the introduction. I skipped the introduction because I already mentioned it. This is the country. This is the country. And this is the country. Country for us, if you can go over this pyramid, the geographical area. We must have a geographical area to live on, to call it a country. And my appeal to each and every one of us, never let anyone, no matter who is he or she, any force, no matter how stronger or weaker, to let you to lose your country, to let you divide your country, to let you destroy your country and your state. Never ever. Country or homeland is a God-given gift to each individual living inside it and on walking on its soil. It's a geographical area. It's a being. We are living together as beings. Even the land is another being because it gives us all the crops, all the wealth, gold, minerals, oil, gas, others. Its environment makes me. What is the environment of my country? It's a desert land, it's a valley, it's mountainous, it's on the sea, on the ocean. This is the climate, the environment which brings other creation to live with us in our country or our homeland. Social life. How can we make countries about social life? How can we make our social life with our brothers, with our sisters, with our friends, with our parents? our neighbors, our grandparents, our relatives, distant relatives, school teachers, priests, monks, scholars, and so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. It's linguistic. I love my language. I love English. I love French. I love Russian. I love German. I love Arabic. I love Urdu. I love Swahili. I love Bihasa, I love Bosnian, I love Serbo-Croat language, I love Chinese language, Japanese language, and so on, Bihasa language, and so on, Malay language, and so on, Creole from uh, Mauritius. Value based. Your country gave you the value that you can be proud of having them are living through these values while you are living on this planet. Faith-based, our faith, Christian, Muslim, Jews, Rastafaria, Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, and so on, and so on. The country gives you this. 
It's the component of what you have in our country, in our homeland. Historical, the history. Who lives on this piece of land, we call it homeland or a country, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 1,000 years ago? How did they live? How did they develop the country? How they went through all the agonies, through all the challenges, and make the history, made civilization. Like look at the Greek civilization, look at the Roman civilization, look at the Byzantine civilization, look at the Egyptian civilization, look at the Inca civilization, look at the uh, Persian civilization, Chinese civilization, uh, and so on. So all this civilization on earth. It's history through our ancestors. Morally, what kind of morality we have in this country? Before religion, during religion, and after religion. What is the value of our religion to contribute to our morality in our country? All this, our homeland has to live within our heart. We live in our homeland, but let the homeland to be a part of our life. And let our homeland or our country to live inside our hearts. Development, development. How we develop our country, our homeland, together. Together. As I said many times before, no one group or party will be able only to develop a multi racial, multicultural, multilingual homeland as we see them nowadays, especially at this time. But all of us, even who are from the same race, even who speak the same language, even who might have the same religion, but who might have different point of view, which bring us, make us different in culture, and moral value in the same homeland. Look at the 52 states of the United States of America. Each state may have a different culture. Look at the districts of UK, each one district. If you go to Scotland, if you go to Wales, if you go to Northern Ireland, if you go to England, different cultures. If you go to Egypt, 26 districts. If you go to Saudi Arabia, I don't know how many districts. If you go to Yemen as well, 20 something districts. When you look at all these, States, culture are different in spite of the fact that most of them have the same religion, maybe speaking mostly the same language. Economical. Economy is not only one size fits all. It's created by manual workers, skilled workers, teachers, professors, engineers, farmers, pastoralists, clergymen, businessmen, and so on, all this kind of economy, we learn. See, this wealth of knowledge to build the economy, each one of us is contributing positively to building the economy from his or her experience and profession. Cognitive as well, as well is the feeling, intellectual, the fee cognitive, intellectual, feeling. You know, when you look at your intellectuality, when you look at in your intellectuality, it's made up of what? Of what you have been taught, first of all, by your mother. When you are breastfed by her, then by your family, your father, your brothers, your sisters, your grandma, your this intellectuality to give you the genes congenitally as well as to give you the culture of your intellectual capability. Feeling, I feel home. When I travel by plane coming back to where I live, if I live in a country like Yemen, this kind of feeling starts to become emotional when the land, when the airplane lands, or less landing. This could happen to Egypt, to Iraq, to Pakistan, to Afghanistan, to UK, to USA, 
to Germany, to Belgium, to France, everywhere. This kind of feeling of coming back. Ah. Loyalty. Loyalty to whom? To the country. This is actually made from the first step to the geography that you are living on. And going through all this to become a loyal. And loyalty is a part of our religion. As the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ مَاتَ دُونَ عَرْدِهِ دُونَ وَطَنِهِ دُونَ مَالِهِ فَهُوَ شَيْدٍ those who die to defend their country, their wealth, their family are martyrs. The loyalty to the country. Cultural, as I said before, earlier, this wealth of cultural knowledge and heritage that I'm having is making the makeup of our country as well. Then I become a change maker. When I go through all this, because my country will teach me to go this, to make the homeland, I will think positively about how can I keep developing, changing positively in trying to bring better future and more stable society in our country. Okay, and all this will build the country. So if we go back, country is geographic place, about the being, the environment, the social life, the linguistic, the living inside it, the value base, the faith, the history, the morality, the development, the economy, the cognitive, the intellectual, the feeling, the loyalty, cultural progressing, a uh, cultural change. All this made the country. I can keep saying again and again and again, don't let any power to destroy your homeland. Because we'll become stateless, become homeless, become refugees, become displaced, become individuals, we we'll lose our history, we we'll lose our culture, we we'll lose our values, we we'll lose our moralities, we we'll lose our religion, we we'll lose everything, or become wild. Don't ever and never made anyone to let you to destroy or to lose your homeland. Why? And this is what we've been seeing and watching the 40 or 50 internally displaced or refugees in the Arab world, which have been seeing them over the last 10 years. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Don't ever sell a piece of land, of your land, and fooling your people, this is good for them. A sand grain is as valuable as a river. The one who will lose the sand grain or the rubble or the small stone will be able to lose the whole homeland or the whole country. Yeah, coming back to more definition to it, it's a space, our country is a space keeping all social components of society, huh? including uh, non-human. If you find such a stable, peaceful space, its citizens will transform their feelings, ideas, dreams, scientific knowledge, professional experience, and partnership into innovative social service to create what? If we have this space as geography and we are stable and we are safe with our potential, first of all, we'll build a solid family. No stable country, no stable homeland, no stable society will be stable without having a solid family that can build the first and smallest unit in the country and build the future of the homeland. A mother and father, a male and female, children and relatives. Creating stability, firmness, and human humility within the different depths of society. Creating coexistence for the society development and the economical growth to enable us 
building the state and institution that establish justice, human rights, equality for all, and increasing the civil liberty space. This will be guaranteed by what? By creating what we call a civil society sector or civil society, independent civil society organization. Building an institution memory. When we have this space there, building an institution memory, pathway to enable safe cross-generational information transfer and keep transferring knowledge from generation to generation. Discovering and creating successive, diverse, and homogeneous community leaders to guarantee the continuous building of a state institution structure and civilization. Motivating and empowering local citizens. This is this is stable state, this stable space. Make fight forever to make our state safe, secure, and peaceful. To reach all this. Motivating and empowering the local citizens to reach their potential. Creating security stability and the assurance to protect what? Every, this is very important, security, stability, and the assurance to protect every ideals and thinker, belief and believer, pioneering and pioneers, even if they differ in ideology, belief, and innovation with us. Have to protect them. They have the right to express what they love and what they believe in. Creating a spontaneous streamlining and creating the snowball effect, enforcing loyalty to protect the coexistence of the country or the country existence. Yeah, and what we call it, loyalty will be the guarantor of protection of our country. Continuous giving. Creating the continuous giving and spending without limits from each citizen, from each human being, whether including human or non-human, even the non-human, which are like birds, like uh, animals, like land, like trees, like, 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 will be ordered by God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give more to such good people who are loyal to their own homeland. Because they establish justice, freedom, and equality, and fairness for all. Creating the continuous giving and spending, okay? Creating humanity inside this homeland. Humanity for the recreation of life. The recreation of the life of life inside the hearts of every living creature. Bringing or creating an humanity for the recreation of the life of life inside the hearts of every living creature. So this is the solution put by Ahmed Sheikh to us is First of all, we have to establish for the children, going back to the issue of this generation gap between the young Palestinian girl and her family uh, member. First of all, establishing national childhood protection program and organizations. Responding to their, what? To their, to the children, psychological, cultural and educational needs. We should not create any organization unless and until it's needed by the children themselves. It has to be needed after understanding this is requirement for the child, child, child protection. Creating a special websites, uh, if we have the electricity in our areas, looking after children, culture, innovation, creativity, pioneering. Be careful. To discover the child pioneering and talent at an early stage. At an early stage, as I give the example all the time for Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, 
started to learn the knowledge of religion at the age of three. And he became a scholar at the age of 14, 15. To talk inside the mosque in Medina and all people, including companions of the Prophet ﷺ, used to listen to him. This was the old educational system in the Arab world and maybe the Indian subcontinent. Khalawi, Kutab, Zawiya. Take the children at the age of three, start teaching them Arabic and the Quran and literacy of life in open air, mostly, to create the leadership from the age of three before the school period starts at the age of six or seven. Building children cultural centers, okay, but the cultural center according to children's need could be advised to be run or guided by children's need. Sometimes some of the program has to be run by grown-up children. Grown-up children, not people like myself. We need to learn one day to take a back step and leave the teenager to lead. Leave the young men and women to lead. Why? Because Muhammad al-Fatih at the age of 16 or 15 was a governor of a state. Because Osama ibn Zayd at the age of 16 or 17 was leading a very, very big army that includes the great companions of the Prophet And so on. So, Give the leadership from the age of, from the teen age to the young, young age of men and women. Don't wait till they become 30 or 40 and tell them you are not mature enough. We are wrong. We are wrong. We are wrong. Because if we give them some sort of leadership at this age, we will reduce the generation gap between us and them. And we will understand that we could be wrong. Looking after children, talents, arts, music, drama, genres, at early ages, early ages. Even make special schools for talented children. Organizing children carnivals, festivals, conferences to each, to teach them what their history, their civilization, moral values, role models, and culture. With what's happening with the social media, our children nowadays take the morality from the box. Do not know the history of their homeland. Do not know the history of the ancestors lived in their country before. They only know what comes to them as a sandwich or takeaway meal with a message of one second, five, 30 seconds, two minutes from somebody telling them either the truth or lies. Organizing children book fair also to give the chance to the children to organize the book fair. Following up child abuse cases legally, morally, and socially. Don't let any children, any child to be abused by anyone. Whether this anyone is a holy man in a mosque or in a synagogue or in a church or in a temple or a political leader, or somebody is very big. Never, ever. Following up, child abuse, okay, following up children, cultural affair, affair, nationally, geographically, and internationally. Coming back to conclude, this cry of the young teenage girl from Palestine reflects the generation gap between her and elder woman in the family. They don't understand that she, what, he, what she means, but how can I have a culture and they don't have a homeland, I don't have a country, I don't have a state, I don't have peace, security, safety. What do you talk about, my mother? 
and my auntie. Talk about what? Okay? And this is the response to the cry not only to the Palestinian girl, but to girls and boys from Myanmar, from Afghanistan, from Syria, from Yemen, from Iraq, and other countries, from DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, from South Sudan, all those, all those, all those, who became homeless, homeless, stateless, and actually refugees or displaced people. So my last appeal to you to conclude is my last appeal to you is never ever allow any force, any power, anyone to destroy your homeland, to destroy your state, to destroy your country. Stand united, understand the vision of those people who are trying to destroy your country, protect your country by being together, by loving one another, by trusting one another, by bringing a better future for the future generation and the children of today who will be mothers and fathers of tomorrow. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah khair. See you again. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.